Welcome to the Father State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. We are talking about legalizing marijuana today. I have with me today, Stephen Boris Sansulo. He is a marijuana attorney out of Long Beach, California. Thank you for coming in. Thank you so much. Also, Scott Chipman, the Southern California Chair of Citizens Against Legalizing Marijuana, better known as COM. Thank you for coming in, Scott, I appreciate it. We appreciate the invitation. Yes, sir. So, Stephen, you are a marijuana attorney. Do you smoke marijuana? Every day. You smoke it every day? Mm -hmm. Why? I'm a marathon runner, and uh, I experience chronic pain in my legs with the 50 plus miles of running that I do a week. And for me, it's a very good form of pain relief at the end of the day. Um, I also find that at times it can be, you know, a good way of finding more creative arguments for the public policy field. Uh, this is such a dynamic and interesting subject to be covering for somebody of, you know, interested in cr both criminal justice reform and frankly from the capitalist edge of a, of a agricultural subsidy that's growing like this. So for me, ha attacking it and, getting and taking on the biases that are associated with it sometimes re require a little bit of creativity. How long have you been smoking marijuana? I tried, my, I tried cannabis at the age of 23. What caused you to try it? Curious. I had gone 23 years as somebody who had experimented with alcohol and tobacco and didn't find what I liked in those, in those particular substances. I'm, been, I'm somebody who's relatively health conscious and frankly the downsides of cannabis use, especially over the long term, have proven to be very minimal compared to those. Are you high now? Absolutely. You are high right now? How many fingers do you see? You were holding three fingers. Oh, uh, you sure? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <No. laughs> And so do you, are you okay with the uh, non-medical use of marijuana as well? From a public policy standpoint, we have what is called a quasi-recreational or quasi-adult use system in that the requirements for actually achieving a medical recommendation, which most courts use as the significant indicator for uh, the, limited, the limited immunity defense, um, is not that hard to get. We don't have the qualified uh, conditionings that many other kind of more recent medical marijuana, medical cannabis states require. So for me, are you okay with legalizing marijuana for non-medical use? Yes or no? What I'm saying is, is that we have already legalized it. We passed through a, we passed through a, a regulatory system. So are you okay with that? I'm, if you're asking, it's a, what you're asking is a very specific question. Right, but you're not answering it. I'm answering it in a way that actually acknowledges the complexities of this matter. I know, but I'm black I, and I'm it, slow. I need a yes or no. Are you okay with legalizing marijuana for non-medical use? Yes or no first, and then- I believe that all use is medical to a degree, but do I want a system in which legislators are gonna acknowledge that there is a particular market for people who are seeking this out purely- You realize you're purely, not answering my question. I, no, I'm answering it in a Give way- Give me a yes or no first, I'm slow. I can't understand all this okay. other stuff. I'm gonna yes start- Yes or no? Yes, I'm okay. in favor of a passing the label of recreational use in order for legislators to feel comfortable acknowledging what is already on the books with MAMRSA, the regulatory package for, for medical marijuana, in implementing those land use policies so that we can actually have a commercial market that meets demand that is already present. Do you smoke marijuana? No. Have you ever smoked marijuana? No. Why not? Well, because I am health conscious. I don't drink uh, coffee, I don't uh, drink alcohol, and I don't do drugs. Well, excuse me. No, I'm kidding. Um, tell the folks about Calm. What is Calm? Calm is a citizens group. We started in 2009 uh, to defeat Prop 19, which was to legalize marijuana in November of 2010. So we are an all-volunteer organization. We're a political action committee. We have uh, several pharmacists. We have a brain biologist. We have health uh, experts. We're statewide. We're opening chapters every week. Uh, all over the state to defeat the Adult Use of Marijuana Act, which is what's going to be on the ballot in November. Uh, what do you think about the fact that Stefan is high right now off marijuana? Well, I, you know, Stefan's not really impacting me right now. I think it's, uh, marijuana use is a serious narcotic. It's psychoactive. It does impact your perception. It impacts your peripheral vision. It impacts your, uh, your understanding of space and time. Of course, it, it affects everybody a little bit differently. The marijuana of, of uh, the 1960s and 70s, when I was in high school, 
was about 1 to 3 percent THC, the Cheech and Chong era marijuana. The marijuana of today can be 15 to 25 uh, percent THC. And if you don't know what hash oil, dabbing, uh, moking. Um, what is moking? If you don't know those things, you don't know marijuana to the, way, to the way that our high school students. Moking is using marijuana and tobacco together. That's a spliff. Nobody calls it moking. Well, and spliff, spliff has been used primarily by Europeans. They actually use the tobacco among teens and everybody else here has been dropping precipitously. So if I can uh, say, that the moking term came from teenagers that we interview. And the uh, indication is that that is a much more intense high than just marijuana. Do you do together. moking? Absolutely not. I don't touch tobacco. Tobacco has killed three of my family members. You do realize that marijuana in today is not the same as it was in the 60s and 70s, right? Yes, and actually he's false on that particular matter. The marijuana of the 60s and 70s, all throughout the, probably the 90s, when we started seeing actual commercial legal availability of, Cal of marijuana, actually had higher degrees of THC because it was being produced solely for the, for the prohibition market. When we started seeing in 1996 with the Compassionate Use Act and the later passage of the early regulatory frameworks for commercial marijuana was that we were starting to see the full spectrum effect of marijuana in terms of all the cannabinoids that we just now recently discovered were actually going up. The degree to which the, the, the THC as the sole indicator of what is, what is available on the market is actually is also false. The highest growing percentage of new cannabis users within this market are actually senior citizens who are specifically requesting and receiving high CBD related to, uh, versions of, of cannabinoid therapies. THC and trying to grow the biggest, baddest, gonna knock you on your feet THC plant is not something that any, that any economically minded con uh, uh, farmer is, is doing today. How do you respond to it? Well, the, the whole idea of BHO, butane hash oil, and uh, other high concentrates is to get the highest intensity uh, THC level uh, you, you can possibly get. Yeah, is the marijuana industry huge? Yes. Is there CBD out there? Right. But uh, for decades, we've been uh, hybridizing uh, marijuana to get higher THC con concentrates and lower CBD. So, uh, you know, our response on the whole medical side of things we have a process to determine what is medicine. And it's not uh, basically just through anecdotal uh, experiences that people have. You know, we, we have an FDA process. People say we've got to legalize it so we can study it. Uh, there's been over 15,000 studies of marijuana. And uh, the vast majority of those studies have indicated that the harms are much more serious than the benefits. And we do have medical marijuana. We have dronabinol, Marinol, Sativex. These are FDA approved drugs for use. Sativex is a high CBD product and it is in orphan drug status right now and it's being used for chronic seizure disorders. When the studies actually came, uh, occurred, about one-third were helped by CBD, the people who were having hundreds of seizures a day. About one-third of the kids were helped. One-third, it did not help at all. And one-third, it harmed. Um, are you against medical marijuana as well, your organization? We are 100% in favor of the FDA process, using science to determine what is medicine, not a bud tender, not a legislator, not a mayor or a city council saying, well, you know, we've decided that marijuana is medicine. Let's use the science. You want to respond to I'm going to respond to every single point that you just said because it's remarkable how many falsehoods you were able to fit within, what, 30 seconds. So first of all, BHO and using that as a concrete term for all, for, for all forms of concentrates is a legally ambiguous and, and very damaging type of way to be looking at this from any level. BHO refers to a specific form of concentrate production using, buta using butane as the main, main component. No one is in favor of this. This is why we are in favor of using regula proper regulation in order to be able to isolate this particular activity to industrial zones where it can be used with either chemical solvents that are not going to be carcinogens or with a mechanical process that, uh, that is going to be more effective and much safer to be able to do. Secondly, the point of, of using concentrates is not necessarily, is not specifically to be boosting up the, t the levels of THC. In fact, it is being able to do what you want, which is a more pharmaceutical grade, controllable version of the oil that every single patient is going to know exactly what it's going into, instead of for those who prefer, like myself, the using flour. 
when, the, when you're able to concentrate it into an oil, you're able to isolate and do the sorts of necessary chemical testing to find out the exact levels of each, each single cannabinoid so that you as the patient have an informed choice about what you're actually ingesting. You don't even get that from the supplement industry, which by the way, I think it's hilarious that somebody from your political persuasion as this kind of very market-based conservative is going to be is all of a sudden putting all their full trust and faith inside the FDA process, which itself is being captured by pharma by our pharmaceutical industry. Look at PBS Frontline. The other about two months ago did an in-depth study into the supplement industry, something that was spearheaded by Orrin Hatch, the biggest anti-marijuana person on the, on the hill. And what they found out is most of the stuff that they're actually selling in GNC or any of these other places is not even the not even the what they're advertising, and those are actually causing harms of, the, of permanent harms, seizures, heart attacks deaths that are being accountable in, the tor in this civil tort system versus this aberrant study that you cited when it came to CBD, not only just, by the way, marijuana, but a synthetic version of Sativex, which is being used in only in the European market because it did not have the safety that regular cannabis therapy has. That's but what we're here response. to do is to talk about should marijuana, should the Adult Use of Marijuana Act be enacted? And the regulations he's talking about are nowhere found in the Adult Use of Marijuana Act. It doesn't require uh, potency, frequency, duration. Right now, we've had 20 plus years that we could have regulated marijuana in California. We have zero regulations. He's That's false. We have, Mer we have MRSA, which was passed we last year and signed by the governor, which has a three-tiered system akin to the alcohol okay, distribution system. That has not system. been applied. It is. Not, it is. It's, it's on the books right now, and it's in the process. We just hired the Bureau of, Mar the Bureau of, Medical, Marijuana, of Me Medical Marijuana Regulation now has three of its top employees and is in the rulemaking process. Yeah, they're in the rulemaking process. We're part of that process, and that will not You're come. You're laughed at in that process because you don't know what you're talking about. We're not. I think we should actually one person talk. Go ahead. And the other person, but um, we are part of that process. The whole uh, the whole state should be part of that process, which is establishing the right regulations for marijuana. But the act itself will not be applied until January 2018. So all the regulations that the marijuana industry says we would love to have regulations, we none of those have been applied. And for 25 years, the state of California could have been applying regulations. They've proved in completely ineffective. There's been zero enforcement, and that is what's harming our kids. Because we're basically saying, you see a green cross? That means medicine. That means use marijuana, it won't harm you. I was under the impression that marijuana was already illegal here in California because of all these marijuana stores around. Yeah, the vast majority of stores throughout California are operating outside of uh, state law, outside of city regulations. But how there are a few, why? We don't have the political will to enforce. Deputy Attorney General Cole uh, wrote a memo that identified about eight or so uh, conditions for which marijuana uh, use or distribution or the industry in particular states, if they violate any of these eight, then federal enforcement com could come to bear. Well, we in California, we did not vote for legalization of marijuana. Right. But when you talk to the U.S. attorney, they say, well, you know about the Cole Memo. The Cole Memo has basically tied the hands uh, behind the back of U.S. attorneys, and there's very little enforcement in states that have marijuana laws. So that's why the industry has received this wink and a nod, do whatever you want, because there's going to be very little or no enforcement. So, Stephanie, um, they do have those stores here. There are four right around this neighborhood. Uh, if it's not legal, and also I know a lot of young guys who there's nothing wrong with them, but they can go to a marijuana doctor, give him $50, and he get a written thing that says that he does have a problem, and they'll get him marijuana, and now they don't want to function in life. They don't want to work. They're just lazy and don't want to do anything. And they, you just said that they're, they went from you're making alcohol. a personal judgment against. Oh, so they went, wait, wait, wait. So they went from alcohol, something that actually kills. Indian. They, they kill went from this, alcohol they kill, to this so A that. substance that kills 50,000 people a year. But are you okay with young men walking into, and girls, walking in, paying $50 to the marijuana doctor, and getting 15, 16, 17, 18 and up? I am in favor. Are of, you okay you, with that? I'm in favor of adults being able How to access 15, commercial 16, and marijuana, if they have a medical reason and they've discussed it and it's a serious medical condition. But I'm telling you nothing's wrong. They're addicted to You're the You're telling drug. it and I know for a fact because I actually represent these in this industry you know, and I've worked work in the criminal the justice system. I work with them. Then you no. need to interdict in their life and make sure that they're actually, that they're, that they're seeing a, psycho, that they're seeing a psychologist. But are you okay with that? Of course not. That's a, that's a destructive behavior that's, pro, that's endemic of any sort of, of, so of, any they, sort of behavior. But I'm going to address every single thing that he's just said. So, so if he has four, no, 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 no,
if we're going to be addressing this from a point of wanting to reduce the uh, serious and proven sociological conditions that are caused by prohibition, then I think 18 is probably a fair in age. Now following up, uh, now following up on, on the panoply of crazy things that he just said, the, <laughs> the, the Adult Use of Medical Marijuana Act is w not exactly something that's particularly favored by a huge majority of people within the, indu the industry itself, much like Prop 19. So if you're going to talk and claim victories inside of Prop 19 in Ohio, you're completely off base because those are actually internal disputes within the, mar medical mar within the marijuana community that help doom those because those people, because we did the job that you didn't do of looking at the actual consequences of these particular laws. And in the case of Ohio, we did not agree with the fact that it was going to be giving majority ownership to a tiny, mi a tiny monopoly of the state. We thought that was against public policy. And 19 was frankly just poorly written and at the last second got a huge boost funding wise and, you know, had its flaws. Would I have liked for it to have been enacted? Because it would have actually brought a semblance of, again, the legal sanctity under the Cole memo that it's going to be necessary for, for moving California legislators into adopting the regulations that we've been begging for for 19 years. That's how public policy works. That's how legislating works. Assuming that we're not, that we, the community, are enjoying this anarchy that it's been, that, that it's perv that it's been pervasive, I mean, it's hard to tell because it's allowed for, a di because from an economic level, it's allowed for diversification of the products and the best practices that are now being implemented across the state. But on the other hand, I want regulation. I want to prevent diversion by making sure that I want to that making sure that there are firm age controls and uh, that licenses are being given to responsible business owners. I want to make sure that the cartels are not benefiting from an all cash economy that is only so serving to make sure that we are abating taxes. It's not going to happen. Look at Colorado. It's a perfect example. What are you what talking about? We, we have 60 percent of the we have 60 percent of the state is already on board with us. We have a we have over 52 percent of the nation is on board well, with those us. Are we are winning addicts. this war and we're laughing at you guys. That's how that works. <laughs> I bet you are because you're high. <laughs> <laughs> you see me so laughing right now? I'm seriously ask, telling you how every single one of these points is dumb. How, what made you decide to become a marijuana attorney? I was a former policy director for the mayor, for the person who is now the mayor of Long Beach. I saw the horrible way that the marijuana industry was treated inside of our city and not being, and not, frankly, the, internally they were not particularly well organized, but and externally they were facing both a legislative veto from a very well entrenched police authority and a uh, council that was unwilling to listen to any of the particular reason or logic behind any the uh, need for affirmative regulations. So I jumped in and I did my job as a citizen. Are you wanted. the first marijuana attorney in the United States? Absolutely not. There, there are been, others? There are marijuana specific attorneys who have been dealing with the subject from a criminal defense standpoint ever since the 1960s. And since the 1990s when we had, uh, when we first had the first legally available commercial aspect of it, there have been people, business and business attorneys from some of the leading firms inside the entire country who are now using this as their primary form of uh, promoting their business. Are you aware of this? That oh, yeah. they're this organized? I had no idea. Yeah, this is a huge industry. There's 50,000 illegal grow sites in California. California produces estimated by the legislature here about 60 percent of all the marijuana that's produced, I mean that's consumed in the country. We are our own drug cartel. Amazing. So, and, and he mentioned the fact that, you know, how you get a, a marijuana recommendation. In my community there's a, a, a free newspaper that has 25 pages of ads almost entirely unpermitted illegal pot shops. Each of the ads has 10 or so phone numbers. I could go to any, call any one of those offices. I go in and they say, there's a girl sitting at a desk, desk, computer, printer. That's the entire office. It's about 200 square feet, maybe. She says, what's your issue? I say pain. She writes chronic pain, prints out the documents with the doctor's signatures already signed on the documents, which say that I've been examined by a doctor. I have talked to dozens of people who say they have never actually seen a doctor and let's touch on alcohol and marijuana. People don't say, don't you think alcohol is so much worse than marijuana? And our answer is absolutely not. We've got 60 plus percent of the population in the United States who use alcohol on a regular basis. Less than 10 percent of them drink to get drunk. Virtually everybody who is using marijuana is, mar is using it to get high. When you drink a lot of alcohol, you go unconscious. Your, your eyes are open, but you go unconscious. You don't know what you're doing. Marijuana doesn't make you, it doesn't cause you to go unconscious. Well, let me tell you some of the differences. Is that right? Yeah, it's a depressant. Mar alcohol right. is a depressant. Right. But when people use alcohol, the half-life of marijuana, I'm sorry, the half-life of alcohol is about an hour. With marijuana, because alcohol is water-soluble, marijuana is fat-soluble. It goes where the fatty right. tissues are. And the, one of the fattiest organs, or similar to fat, or, uh, uh, 
as the brain. And marijuana actually primes the brain. Uh, it primes the brain for addiction uh, to opiates. What? I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, a, that's an insanely idiotic thing to say when I'm, when I'm representing and I'm, and I'm hosting a panoply of US veterans who have gotten off of opiates because of cannabinoid therapy. And you're false. It is actually not the, the, the fatty parts of the brain in which, can, uh, which cannabis is affecting. It's called the cannabinoid system, an entirely separate system. This is not my opinion. This is Bertha Madras, who's a brain biologist from Harvard who's been studying marijuana use for 25 years. So there are pretty clear people who come from Harvard. I, go, I graduated from Brandeis. We made fun of Harvard. So if we're going to be talking <laughs> silly about the, for some of these academic credentials, we, I can bring up a host of people too. Are you concerned that today marijuana can be delivered to your door. I represented actually the, the, some of the biggest delivery services inside of LA because when they were recently banned from Prop D. And I'll say this, I've actually written an article against mer the, a delivery only ordinance inside of my own city of Long Beach. Why? Because, do, because I want a diverse marketplace. The UFCW right now is providing training inside of their union shops inside of LA in order to make sure that this is actually happening. You know who, do, who, who, who benefits from a delivery service? Incapacitated people know, who are quadrupoli- well, who people are can lie, they can pretend that, hey, deliver it to me, you can I lie can't to a, get You can it. lie to your and primary care physician right now and get oxycodone. I know, but that doesn't make it right. Are you concerned about that? I'm concerned, what, I'm, So why not fight to end the delivery service? Because that's going, to per, that's going to take off access from veterans who are homebound, from quadriplegics who are homebound, from AIDS hospice care. Uh, uh. He's basically already admitted that the Adult Use of Marijuana Act is a flawed act. I mean, the, you know, it's not going to provide any of the regulations that he's even suggested. There will be delivery. There will be advertising. There will right. be pot shops. And, you know, so all of the things that the marijuana industry said, well, this would be perfect. This would be really good. We're not going to get any of that with the Adult Use of Marijuana Act, and so that's why we're suggesting people need to vote no. Every 18-year-old can right now buy as much marijuana as they want, as often as they want, and every 18-year-old has a 17, a 16, or a 15-year-old friend or, or right. sibling. And that's how our much of the marijuana is getting down to these kids. So how is it looking for you guys this November? Let me add one more thing, because we're ignoring the, the big picture here, which is we talked about age, right? Right. He says 21, or he says 18. Um, there's, Alma says 21, but Adult Use of Marijuana Act. However, this is the concern. The brain is not even fully developed until about age 25. That's when all these connections that are being disjointed by marijuana use are fully functioning. So if you don't start marijuana until later, until you're 19, 20, then your chance for addiction goes way down. But the average age of introduction to marijuana right now is 12 years, four months. That's yeah. when our kids are getting exposed to marijuana. And it's because we haven't sent the right message about it. Even the marijuana industry itself should be sending a very strong message saying, we don't want kids to be users. But the reality is that the marijuana industry depends on addiction. If I go in and I tell a doctor, you know, doctor, my back hurts. He says, you know, if you lose 30 pounds, your back might feel better. <laughs> that is the level of that you can get any amount of marijuana for as long as you want for, and buy as often as you want. Why don't I see more people on your side protesting these around here or in your area, these marijuana shops? I'll tell you one reason why is because I get calls every, every day almost from somebody who says, you know, I'm in Fresno or I'm in Escondido and I've got marijuana stores. Are those marijuana stores legal? And they are not. It's a completely lawless industry. And so people will just say, eh, they're not going to enforce anything. The, the worst I'm going to get, I'll be in business for six months or a year. I'll make ten or $15,000 a week, and then they will shut me down, and I might get a fine of two or $3,000. Well, that's not a deterrent. I mean, you can walk on the street. You just smell pot everywhere. So? I want to ask you this. So, he says, so, uh, you smoke marijuana every day, mm -hmm. every day. Yep. How, many, how, how often during the day do you smoke? That depends. Usually I'm using a small amount of vapor inside, a small amount of flour inside of my vaporizer weekends when I have more, more time to myself and less to be able to do. I'm probably going to be using a little bit heavier. I mean, you, you have downtime from marijuana? Yeah. When you're sober, you're clear headed. What, your definition of sober is not going to, is, 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 is assuming that what, a, that you would, what, that you would not, time, uh, that you're not going to, that you're not going to test positive for having it, the intoxicant. So are there times during the day where you have a clear mind, you're clear headed? I have a clear mind even when I'm high, sir. And do you go to court high? Absolutely not. You don't go to court high. Why nope. not? 
because that is an issue of professional responsibility and determining by the licensing authority of the state of California for well, my they bar. They wouldn't know that you high. Yeah, but I don't want. But I don't want to put my clients at risk or put the client of any sort of litigation that's going to be involving my personal. I know, habits. but if you clear, you know what you're doing. Why you are high? Why? How would you put your client at risk? Because it, because if they found they because because of the 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 license because of the issues around prohibition, I don't want my personal decisions. Just like I wouldn't want any lawyer who in, who goes to a strip club on the weekends or has a who has too many beers on Saturday to be that used to, to use be used as a cudgel against their prefer, their professional ju uh, uh, judgment. I know, but you are doing it because you have a it's knee my problem, right? It's my personal decision. You have a knee problem. No, right? I, I said leg, chronic leg problem. Leg chronic problem. Pro so if you went to court high on marijuana, you wouldn't be breaking the law, right? I would. Well, that's actually a little. That's un, that's unclear right now. Employment. Most of the laws regarding employment are usually done from the employer's standpoint. I'm self-employed, so no boss is going to be able to fire me. However, for people who are qualified medical patients, this is actually a very. This is a, a civil rights issue because we have veterans and we have people who are suffering from MS who are still choosing to participate in the workplace because of whatever, because frankly, disability payments aren't what they used to be, but they face discrimination at their workplace because they'll test positive, even if they're not intoxicated. They'll be taking mostly CBD or uh, low THC. I know, but for you, you, you have a medical problem, mm -hmm. so you have a right to mo smoke marijuana for your pain. I have a limited immunity so, defense. So if you went to court high because of your problem, you would not get in, you wouldn't be breaking the law, so you wouldn't lose your license or get in trouble, right? That's not. That's up to the to the both the licensing authority and any sort I mean, of. But you know the law. I know would the law. I don't want to risk would it. You lose your I would rather endure the pain of my legs and putting my clients at but risk. But I'm trying to find out about the law. Would you lose your license if you went to court high? I don't believe so necessarily, but I don't want to risk it. Okay, so the law says no. You would not lose your license. So why don't you go to court high? Because I don't want to put my clients and myself at that particular risk. Because what kind of risk? Because, because you said you could think because you're, it's you're because not going to lose your license. Because my determination, because my interpretation of the law that I just had right, right. there is not necessarily how the charging authority is going to be going. I might, I might anger somebody inside of the bar licensing office, and they're going to have a vendetta against me. And but they can't do anything about it because you are legal. They could. No, the law is in, breaking the law. No, I'm not. It's not as clear as black and white. It's ambiguous like a lot of things in the law. It's up to the charging authority. So how you uh, is, uh, is there like a large association of you guys what, uh, that push to uh, legalize marijuana? 60% of the state right now. Are you going to win in November? Yeah, it's hard to tell. I think that the that uh, it depends on a lot of different factors. Right now, the get out the vote operation for the for this are going to be relying heavily on on uh, donations from billionaires, which I'm not a big fan of in terms of uh, campaign financing from any particular matter. On the other hand, it is getting up a large a large degree of community support as well because folks are understanding that uh, prohibition is actually the is the main evil. So you say 60% of the people in California are in favor of legalizing marijuana? Yes. So if that's the case, then you guys are going to lose. Well, Badly. That's, that's an opinion poll. So oh, that's yeah. necessarily oh, who's going to come out to vote or whether that is accurate or not. We think the, the number is actually, it depends on how you ask the questions, too. Did you have fun today? Sure. You did. Did you have fun? Absolutely. All right. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to see what happened come November. What's your name? Isn't it on there on the license, man? State. There's people who tells me that I look a lot like my mother. You look just like her. Do you see pictures of my mom? No, but I'm looking at you and I can imagine this is what your mother looked like. You resented your mother, she was your own identity, so you became like your mother. Could that be the reason that you start to feel like a woman as a boy because you took on the woman's spirit or the woman's identity? Ah!